speaker anyway. So my name is Josh Hernandez. I work for FBS, the creators of FlexMLS, which is one of your front ends of choice as far as using the MLS, searching for listings, working with prospects or contacts, that sort of thing. There are a lot of people today, and there is only one of me, so while you're free to try to follow along on your computer, I won't be able to help you individually if you get stuck or have a problem. So a lot of people find it easier just to keep the computers closed, follow along with what I'm doing on screen. This is being recorded, I've been told, so they're going to make that available for you so you don't have to have a photographic memory to keep track of everything that I'm saying. I am an engaging speaker, but not that engaging. <laughs> So with that, let's go ahead and talk about a few of the things that we'll look at during this first hour today. And number one, what is a front end of choice? Why would you use Flex MLS, Flex MLS as the front end of choice? Uh, if you want to try Flex MLS as a front end of choice, I'm going to show you some resources on how to get there. I don't work for Triangle MLS, so I can't even actually get in and show you those screens myself, but I'll show you how to find out. So just a quick show of hands. How many people are currently using, are doing a trial of Flex MLS? So a good deal of people. How many people haven't uh, tried up, signed up for the trial yet? Okay, so I'll show you where to find those resources so you can sign up for the trial. And that trial runs through June if I remember that date correctly. Lynn gives me the thumbs up. All right, I got it right now. So, um, what is a front end of choice? The front end for the MLS is just what you use to look at listings. What you use to search, share listings with prospects, put in your contacts, create searches for your contacts, create searches for yourself, pull statistics from the MLS. So that's what the front end does. It's not where you enter in the listing data. And so why use Flex MLS as the front end? Number one, there can only be one back end where you do that listing data entry in the listing manager, and that's actually Flex MLS. They can only have one back end where the data goes in, and that is Flex MLS. So you don't have to leave Flex MLS when you want to edit listings. It's there immediately for you. You don't have to go back to the dashboard and go to the listing manager to make an update on a listing. It also means, since it is the back end and the front end, or a front end, you have no delay when somebody updates a listing in the MLS in the listing manager. You'll see that immediately when you're in Flex MLS. So if there's a new listing, a price change, whatever it is, that will be immediately available in Flex MLS. And that is probably the biggest reason to use Flex MLS as a front end of choice because although Paragon and Matrix, great systems, offer great features, because they can only process so much data at a time when updates come over, their updates are typically 15 plus minutes behind. So that often means there's a price change your clients out there on Zillow, they see that 15, 20 minutes before you actually see that in the MLS if you're using one of those other front ends of choice. So to me, uh, that's the biggest plus is there is absolutely no delay for listing updates. Somebody changes a listing, you see that change immediately. And then the final reason I always recommend uh, for Triangle members why they would want to use Flex MLS as their front end and that's because you get access then to the Flex MLS app. No additional cost. There's a little bit of a trick for logging in. We'll go into in our afternoon class on using the app. But with that app, you can edit listings from the app. So I can go into price changes, status changes, add photos. And coming later in 2024, you have full add and edit access from the app. So you can go in and start adding a listing on the app, finish adding it on the website or vice versa. So all of that will be available later in 2024 as far as the full ad edit capability. So for those of you who are wondering and haven't yet started using FlexMLS either as a trial front end or not, 
and you say you have questions, can I try it right now? Can I try both? Can I have all three as a front end of choice? A lot of different ways you can do that. But what you will do, and there is a great video, if you have not been to the Triangle MLS YouTube channel, if you go to YouTube, search Triangle MLS, you'll see this channel pop up. And I know Matt's got some great uh, podcasts on here, but there are some very short and very direct videos. How do I choose a front end of choice? And this walks you through the process. The video is like one minute and 40 seconds long, so it's not long. And it shows you, can I select multiple? What would the price be if I use multiple? There's no price increase if you're doing a trial run. All of that covered in that two minute video. And what it ends up looking like is when you go to mytrianglemls.com and log in, you'll go to the dashboard and I have kind of a screenshot since I can't actually get into your dashboard here. And you do all of that when you click on view account right above on the left side of the screen, right under your name. That's where you get in and go set that front end of choice or go for the trial bit. Once you're using it, um, either as a trial or as a permanent front end, then you can click on it down in the MLS search features on your dashboard and you'll have access to everything that I'm about to show you today. So some people already do, some don't. Just wanted to make sure that everybody is kind of on the same page of how you get there if you're not doing it yet. So in FlexMLS, let's begin. This is kind of the intro class. We have a variety of skill levels in the class. Some people have been using it for months. Others, this is the first time seeing it. So we're gonna start with really basic system navigation. Where are things located? How do I get around? And so we'll look at help options, the menu and favorite menu items, and the dashboard. And this is where I start because when you log into the system, this is what you see. So I've already logged in today, and you can see I've got this dashboard underneath with gadgets, and the gadgets, we'll talk about those, those are just shortcuts to different areas in the system. And then I have my menu right here in the upper left, and I can open that and go to any menu item. And then I have my favorite menu items. And above that, on our very top row, uh, is where you're going to see the help options. And so, I like to point out a few things. Number one, help over in the upper right where my mouse is currently hovering, it says help. And when I click on that, it gives me a lot of options. But the first one is help for the page that I'm currently on. So if I were in quick search and I say, I don't know how to use the quick search, when I click on help, help with this page, it's going to bring up help directly for that quick search. Now, you have additional help options here as well. If you like to read, you go to FlexMLS Help. Uh, people are laughing, I'm with you. I've got a degree in English, master's degree, which means I hate reading. So what I like to do is I like to click on video training right down here. Also searchable, you can just search what you're looking for. I like going to the short tips section. When you go to the previously recorded webinars to watch, it may be me giving the webinar or one of our other trainers, Ann or Amy, giving the webinar. When you go to short tip videos, for some reason, I drew the short end of the stick. I record all of those short tip videos. <laughs> so if my voice really annoys you, don't go there. But otherwise, they're really good and they're usually about two minutes long. Uh, there's a ton of one minute videos. Our marketing team put together a bunch of one minute ones last year. And some additional help options here as well. If you want to reach out to Triangle MLS, contact MLS, and then contact support. That goes to the Triangle MLS support when you reach out to them. Now there's one other help option that I have on my screen, and that's guided help. If you don't see guided help when you log in, just go over here Safari, I use Mac, so I use Safari a lot. Uh, Safari has the kind of a built-in pop-up blocker. The guided help is pop-up help. So if I go to FlexMLS help and just say <coughs> guided help, I don't have it. I'll just put in guided help in my, that search at the top. And as I scroll down that screen, 
why can't I see guided help? And it will tell you which setting you need to change in your browser. Usually it's Safari that, that has a pop-up blocker instantly, but I have seen, I think the newer updates of Chrome also have an, an automatic blocker. So if you don't see that, you can get it on there by just going to help and looking to see the browser setting you need to change. But what Guided Help does, I'm gonna click on my logo and just go back to my dashboard. What Guided Help does is it brings up on-screen help. So I'm going to click on that. I get a lot of options here. One of the things we'll talk about today are subscriptions inside FlexMLS. And when you hear the word subscription, it just means automatic emails, listing updates for my, my contact. But if I say, okay, we went through that today. I wanna try it myself later in the day. Say subscriptions, set up automatic listing updates, a subscription. When I click on that, I am going to get on-screen help. This is like somebody from support standing over my shoulder telling me, click here, now click over here, now click over here. So I just read, there's no sound. I read and it's going to point to where I need to go. So I say next, and it tells me, if you want to set up automatic updates for your contact, I'm zoomed in on my screen really far, I think I've got, there we go. Um, it's going to say, I see this little blue ring box pop up, click on quick search. You have to start on a search if you want to send updates. So I go to my search, I get the help. Do you know how to search or show me how to search or just show me how to save the search? I'll say, how do I search? And again, it's going to point, start over here, select your property type. I come in, select my property type, put in my search criteria, whatever it is, and I just follow these on-screen prompts. Like I said, it shows you where to go on the screen. And this is a really fantastic tool because you know what you want to do, you just don't know the <coughs> workflow necessarily inside Flex MLS. And Lynn has heard me say this like 12 times this week, but I liken it to getting a rental car. I have been working at FBS for almost 11 years. I've done one go live, one new conversion a month, uh, almost every month during that 11 years, bringing on new Flex MLS users. And that means I go to a lot of airports and I get a lot of rental cars and it takes me forever to figure out how do I adjust everything? I'm going to pause that. Randy has so an announcement. Quick housekeeping idea. If you have an open seat beside you and you have things in it, please take them out of the seat and raise your hand if you have an open seat beside you. Thank you. And please, if you need to, put your stuff under your chair and raise it. Thank you very much. The last thing I need on my training record is a fire code violation. <laughs> so, <laughs> I appreciate that. And, but like I said, I can get in a rental car, it takes me 15 minutes to figure out how do I adjust the seat, the mirrors, the AC, the music, get my phone hooked up. And if I'm in my car at home, even when my wife goes in and messes up my seat, it takes me two seconds to put everything back. Because I know that. You know your current system, Paragon, if you've been using that. But the guided help is there to help you. It's like having somebody sit next to you saying, click on this now, now go over here. Now you'll want to come over and click on that. So that's what the guided help does. Great for a brand new user inside Flex MLS when you're just learning to use some of the features. Now there is also a search bar right next to that guided help. And that search bar, it says enter in an address or an MLS number, and I can search for a single address or bring up a listing by MLS number, but it does a lot. Like if I'm looking for another, um, agent inside the MLS or somebody in the MLS. I can start typing in their name and here's Lynn right here under members and you can go in. So you can use that as the office member search. You can come out and also in here, you can actually type in search criteria. So I could say up to 500, you can put in zeros, you can put in K, it tries to be predictive. Uh, I'm gonna say up to 500,000, three bed, city of, start typing in Raleigh, because I always mess up the I and the E. And when I come in here, you'll see it's saying, you wanna start a search for three plus bedrooms, up to 500,000, city of Raleigh. So this searches for 
I'll say search criteria wise, it looks for like the big things, square footage or living area, location, price. I can say recent closed and it would go status change of uh, closed in the past 30 days. But the really nice thing about this is whatever I use that quick launch bar for, I can hover over the result and instead of just opening it up here, you'll see new tab up here over on the right. And when I hover over and click on new tab, that opens up whatever it is I'm searching for in that tab. Now it's going to start me on my list of 316 results. I could always drill down. Maybe I want to say, well, I need to make sure all of these listings have central error, whatever it is. We'll talk about navigating the search results page in a moment, but I would just come back over to edit search, and then I would put in my additional modified search criteria. So I can put lots of things here. I can type in the word draft, for example, and it's going to give me my past five searches that I ran, but did not save. Uh, so if you accidentally leave a search screen, you can go to your draft searches, and again, I can open those in a new tab. You can have as many tabs open as you would like. So if you're trying to multitask, and I don't know one person in the real estate industry who has just one thing that they're doing at a time. Uh, so if you're like me, I don't, I don't actually work selling anything, but I teach. I've always got like five, 10, 15, 25 tabs open on multiple browsers. So multitasking, just use that. Whatever page I land on, I can leave. I've got the full system here. This is my third one open. So if I want to come back over here, go to contact management, come over on this one, go to my messages. I can do something different in each. I can be working with five different contacts, creating and saving searches for five different people. So if you like to multitask, that quick launch bar, just hover over anything, open it in a new tab. So I am going to come from here, I'm gonna mute because I see my sister is starting to text me right now. So. <laughs> and I know once she gets on a roll. Um, <laughs> I also know my wife works at the Pentagon and doesn't usually have cell phone access during the day. However, my wife was included in that and she, my wife is off today, so my sister and my wife start texting, that's gonna blow up. So we don't want those interruptions on my screen. Back in FlexMLS, um, underneath that top row, and you see me clicking on that triangle MLS logo every time I do that, it takes me back to my dashboard. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the connection. I thought somebody was, Having, having something, I need to repeat myself. So I'm going to go here and just look at the menu and point out that when I open the menu, any menu item that I see and I use frequently, I can pin a star next to it. So if I hover over, you'll see here, I promise you, you have access to add and edit listings from FlexMLS. I can just go over here to that change listing. I hovered over it and that star appears, you just click on that star and I can pin whatever I want to my favorites bar. So if I'm often going down, I'm going to come down to the tax section, maybe I use CRS for tax searching a lot, I can pin those third party apps up to my favorites as well. So again, I don't have to go out to my dashboard to get there, I can just come right here from inside FlexMLS. And this, favorites row where my mouse is going back and forth frantically. That is, is, the idea is that brokers, agents, office admin staff, you all use the system differently. So whatever things you use most frequently, you just pin up here to your favorites so you have one click access for those items. And that level, level of customization also extends down underneath where my dashboard is. Uh, so that dashboard, you'll see I've got a message board, a hot sheet, my listings. I'm really zoomed in, so I kind of have to scroll down to see a few other things. My contacts are here. This dashboard is customizable as well. So I'm going to just click and drag my contacts. So maybe I want those up here. So I can modify my dashboard. I'll put my hot sheet back up here again. 
A few things I want to point out on the dashboard since it's customizable. Number one, this message board. Uh, you might be tempted to say, can I remove that? I never read the message board. But the MLS loves for you to keep that there because they'll put important announcements here. But also, if you just scroll down a little bit in that message board gadget, you see the recorded Flex MLS training. I know the MLS has this in other places, but you can just easily access this from here as well. So if you're looking and you say, well, I want to know how do I use my Android app, um, you'll just click on that, open up that video. So those are previously recorded webinars that are there for you. So I'd just like to point that out. So once again, you don't have to wait for this session recording to be sent to you. You still have access to all that information um, in those videos. The last thing I'll point out with the customizable dashboard is each of these gadgets has settings. And one I want to say you should probably or may want to modify my hot sheet because the hot sheet is looking at all the associations, all the listings in Triangle MLS. And you might say, well, I don't do a lot of business out in Alamance County or wherever it is. I just want to look at the hot sheet, look at the market activity when I come into Flex MLS, just in the locations that I usually work with. So right now it's looking all property types in the entire MLS, all those listings. Click on those three dots in the upper right corner and there is a settings option. All the gadgets have it, but I like to show it on the hot sheet because here I've got filters. I can filter and say, just put a hot sheet for these specific cities or counties or zip codes, the postal code. So maybe I'll just do, um, Raleigh, you can put in multiple cities or multiple counties. Maybe instead of that, I just want Wake County. Instead of Raleigh, I'll just take that off. We'll go down to Wake County. And property types, all property types are being used by default, but if I don't do a lot, maybe with commercial as an example, I can come in and just select the property types that I would like to see inside my hot sheet. And I'll click on save in the upper right of that <coughs> gadget. And now when I come in, I see, okay, now it's showing me past 72 hours. Maybe I just want the past 24 hours. So when I log into Flex MLS first thing in the day, I can see, okay, I can go to my hot sheet, see the new listings, price changes, and the locations that I want. Um, you don't have to do that if you want to keep track of the entire MLS or Maybe you say, well, can I do one hot sheet for one city and another hot sheet for another city so I can have those always available? You can get in and like I said, this is customizable for your dashboard. People get really creative. But just to show you that example, if I click on customize in the upper right corner, the first option is add gadgets. So I can come here, I get a list of gadgets on my left, all the available gadgets, I'll click on this list. I'll click on daily just to show you I can add. Hot sheet says it's already there, but I can add another. And I can put in 10 different hot sheets, point them all at different locations or different property types. And I'm just going to click return to dashboard. And when I do add a gadget to my dashboard, I'll scroll down it is going to be put at the bottom. So I can always just drag and drop again to put it wherever I want. So now this one starts defaulted looking at the entire MLS. So I can go in and modify, change that to something else as well. So I can have them point wherever I want. If you're playing around and say, well, I was just doing this as an experiment. I want to get rid of that. Again, those three dots, remove. And I'll click OK. So you can undo that. It's really easy to also just go back to customize, add whatever you want. So that's just a little bit of how to get around in the system and the dashboard when you log in. We're going to move now for the next 20 plus minutes and talk about searching inside FlexMLS. I'm, I'm going to do a couple of example searches. I'll do one really basic and then we'll drill down and look like, how do I exclude something from a search or how do I use the map on a search? So I'm going to first come over here 
And I'm going to start on the quick search, and that's where we'll focus today. When I go to my menu, let me zoom in a little bit, make that easier to see, you'll see I've got a search section in my menu, and there are a ton of options available. Don't let the name fool you, quick search. That is the most powerful search tool inside Flex MLS. So there's nothing that these other searches do that I couldn't do in the quick search. They're just specialized, like MLS number search, I could just cut and paste all the MLS numbers I want in there. But I can do anything, search for anything, bring up any listing in the quick search. And before I click on that screen, I like to first explain searching and the quick search specifically in three steps. Search, find, act. Search, what am I looking for? Locations, price, whatever it is. Find, look at the results, select the listings I want to work with. And then what action am I taking? Am I emailing them, printing them, saving the search for a client, saving it to myself? Maybe I'm looking for comps to send to a CMA, whatever action I'm taking. So when I think of it as search, find, act, when I come and look at my quick search screen, I'll click on quick search, I've got it pinned to my favorites, I am going to see a lot going on on the screen. I'm going to just zoom out my hair. So search, I start in the upper left, I put in my search criteria, whatever that happens to be. I am going to just put in some really basic, we'll say 600,000, single family. We'll come back and do a really detailed example on the search in a moment. And I'm just gonna narrow this down into, I get some listings appearing on my map. So, I can use my search criteria, I can use the map to search, but when I want to start reviewing the results and selecting my listings, fine. That's going to be this row right above the map. It says edit search, that's currently highlighted, but then I see list, detail, photos, map. So this is where I go and review the listing. So you can begin, I've got 383 search results here. I can begin on the list, but I don't have to. If I just have somebody sitting next to me and they're like, let's look at the photos, just tap on photos, I will see the full list of search results over on the left-hand side of the screen. So right now, 2202 Bird Street is going to be what's displaying. I'll see all of the photos here. The photo tab will also have videos and virtual tours there. They'll be in line in this film strip, so they'll be right after the primary photo. That's where the videos and virtual tours display, then the rest of the photos. And as I'm looking at listings here, if I say, oh, I want to keep track of 2719, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce that. I'm going to come here, I'm from Montana, I'm gonna butcher everything I say, so. Um, so I'm gonna come in and I just put a check mark there. And I don't need to put a check mark on any listing to view it, that's just to keep track of it. You'll see I have at the top, it says 383 results, one is currently selected. So if I come down and say, well, let's look at this one, I start looking at the photos, I see there's the videos, virtual tours I can go to. If I wanna keep track of it, I can check it, but if not, maybe I'll just go down to the next one. I like this, I'll keep track of this, I'll put a check box there. And when I want to review these instead of just the photos, I'll maybe go to the detail page. Whatever listing I currently highlight over on the left, those details are going to show on the right-hand side of the screen. And so I can come up here, look at the listings. Again, if you want to select, I could check or uncheck. Maybe I want to go in, I'll check this one. Let's do this one too. So I've got three listings selected. And I'll come out and the list, and we'll look at all of these results screens in detail in my second example. But just to show you, my results are here. And if I say, well, I don't want all 383, I just wanna see all of the three I have selected. You just tap selected, it narrows it down now, it's just those three. So if I was looking at the map, for example, just those three are plotted on the map, and I can click on one, that shows me the star highlights where it's at location-wise on the map. 
So if I want to go back to all results, I just go where it says selected that I have highlighted and click back to all results. Now, my actions are at the top right of the screen. Search, find, what am I going to do with these listings that I've selected? So up at the top, share, get a link for social media, email those to a contact, save the search for myself or a contact, send them updates, <coughs> print listings, maybe I was looking for sold listings for comps, I could send them to the CMA. Uh, and then here you have my favorites. Seventh grade, I was a hall monitor, so uh, report violation. Not a way to make a lot of friends like you might think it's going to be. Um, but you do have that report violation, so maybe something's mapped incorrectly. Um, you could go in and just use that to report. You do have additional options here under those three dots in the action row. Search details, that just tells me, what are you currently looking at? I've got active, coming soon, city of Raleigh, and 600,000 plus. You also have the link for showing time, if you want to go out to showing time from here. You can export listings, so if people like to export listings, use in their own spreadsheets to, to get, create stat reports or something like that. Jump to listing. I've got 383 results, so as I'm coming through and trying to get down to listing number 383, whoops, um, I like to just say, if you've got a lot of results, use jump to listing, type in whatever it is, I'll just put in 380, and then it will just take me on the list, so you don't have to worry about all of that scrolling to get here because it is an infinite scroll. If you've got 5,000 results, you can scroll for quite a long time. You can also sort, we'll talk about that in a moment. But those are my actions at the top. Now I am going to take, we'll just do one example. I'll manually email listings to a contact. So I'll email these to Martha, we'll say. So I am currently showing on my detail this 7416 Fiesta Way. But I've got three different ones selected. This one is not selected. <coughs> You don't have to just show what you're about to use. It knows I've got those three selected. I can check which three do I have selected. But I don't have to stay just showing those selected. When I take an action, it is going to ask me, do you want to use all the results or just the ones you have selected? So I'll show that when I go to email, click on email, it does give me a choice. Do I want to send like the printer friendly <laughs> listing report? Uh, no, 99% of the time, you want to send the interactive listing. Why? Number one, if there are photos and videos on the listing, uh, they're not gonna look great on a printed report. They're gonna look fantastic here because people can pinch, zoom, the original file size of the photo is included, so when they tap this, the, the original high resolution photo. And also, Maybe they don't open it for a few hours, or they don't open it until tomorrow or the next day. The interactive listing always shows the listing data immediately from the MLS, so it's always up to date. So if there's been a price change when they open it up, they see the current price. If there was a status change, they will see the current status. So it would no longer say active, if it went under contract, they'll see, oh, I should have opened this yesterday. There's a reason I'm working with Josh and he's sending me things that I should open. So I say, usually you're sending the interactive version of that listing. I'll just click on that. And over on the left side of my screen, let me zoom in, it says what you want to send. Whatever listing's currently highlighted, selected, and when you put a check mark, that's the default because it assumes that's probably what you want to do. But I might say, well, let's send Martha all 383. Oh, <laughs> Martha's got a lot of time on her neck. But let's, let's actually stick with just those three selected. Now, underneath that, I see, am I sending the public version? I have the option for private here as well. When you see public, think that's the client copy. So anything in there, like the listing agent's contact information, that all gets stripped out of the public version. If I was sending this to somebody in my office or somebody else in the MLS, I can send that private version. I will get a pop-up saying, 
Are you sure you want to send a private version? Uh, I don't know if you all have fines. Most MLSs have fines for sending those private information to the wrong individuals. Public version is what I'll send to Martha. Right underneath that, if these listings have documents, it says, do I want to send the documents and make those available? Now I'm going to check this one right here because I didn't check to see what documents are in those listings, but I'm just sending the documents that are publicly available. So when Martha opens this up, she'll see a link for documents. She can just open it and view any of those public documents. Now over on my right hand side, who am I sending this to? I'm sending it to Martha. If she's in my contacts, I can look through here. I don't have Martha yet. So I'll add her on the fly. It says add a new contact. So I'll just say, this is Martha Gorder. Since I'm emailing, I need to put in her email address. So I'll put in her email. Later on, we'll break into Martha's inbox. You cannot break into your client's inbox. I set this up beforehand. <laughs> so I'll click save contact. We added Martha. You can add additional contacts if you do it to blind carbon copy. If you want to email this out, but you don't want to add the person as a contact, the line underneath the recipients where I can select, this just allows me to type in an email address. So I can just type in an email address, but not actually add the contact as well. Multiple email addresses, just put a comma in between. And then I have a couple of options here. One, if I want to copy, check that box. If I want to be notified, when Martha opens it up and she looks at the listing, this little box, I check it, that notifies me when Martha views the listing. And then I have, how do you want to send it? <coughs> the default is using Flex MLS. So we'll see, Martha would see in her inbox, Josh Hernandez via Flex MLS has sent you whatever these three listings are. Uh, you could also say, I'm going to use my own email application, maybe I use Outlook or something, or just give me the link. I want that link so I can cut and paste it into my Gmail account. Um, so you have those options here, but I'm going to send it from FlexMLS. Underneath that, I have my subject and my body and a little word editor so you can bold and highlight. And I'll just say, here are some great listings. <coughs> and then I take a look, let me know what you think. And if you always say the same things in your email and say, can I save that just kind of like as an email template so I can preload it and then customize it, right above subject, it is going to say templates. So I just click on options. And I can say, let's save this as a brand new template. I'm gonna call this email template. I don't know where I'm at this week, five. I'm not very creative when I name things, pretty direct, email template five. Now, whenever I come in to send an email, I can just pull up one of those templates that I've made and it's going to load that in underneath. So I can come up, we'll do that email template five. So now I've got that email template, I can customize that Hi, I'll customize that and say, Martha, take a look, let me know what you think. At the bottom, by default, my signature card is already included, so that just pulls from your profile information, your photo, your um, contact information. And I can click email, you might say, well, I'm not used to Flex MLS yet. Can I preview this? Just click view the listings before you send right at the bottom right of the screen. That will show me that I'm just sending those three listings that I selected. All right, those are the ones I want to send. I'll click on email and now it's going to send out to Martha. Martha just received that in her inbox. Question right here. Um, so you have the generic card and then you have the option to do, there's another card in there. When I am looking at the generic card, it has my information, but it has my home address listed. How do I fix that? So um, <laughs> you're going to need to reach out to support. The generic card may be hard coded in, so it's where it's pulling that information from behind the scenes. 
there's something that needs to be to be changed back there. So you won't be able to change the generic card. It's kind of a hard coded card. When I'm just going to go back to that screen, I'll say send another email, just so everybody can see this um, option we're talking about right here with the business card at the bottom, generic card. I would say change it, use the triangle MLS business card because this one is probably set to show the correct information. If it's wrong on this one, reach out to support. Um, but this one is the one I would probably recommend because I know Triangle MLS had that set up. Yeah, that's, that includes that's the, the one that I use, but it's always default to the generic and um, you, know, you have to be careful because I don't want people knowing where I live. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um, I'm actually going to make a note just for myself because I'm going to test that out and see. Yes. address that right now. I do have a note of it right here. So just thanks for that additional information. Also, when I send an email or take any action from my search results screen, and I want to get back to my search results, do not use your browser buttons to go backward. Because what I think is my previous screen and what this frame in the browser thinks is my previous screen, those are not going to match up usually. So that's why you'll see when I sent that, I had a link here that says you wanna send another email or return to search results. Return to search results is also right here. Anytime I take an action, just look in the upper left and it will tell you to go back to the search results. And when you do that, you make sure, here we are with those 383 results, pre-selected and um, now, right where we left off. No load time or anything like that for that. So we just did a really basic search. I put in a really basic price. We looked at the results. We selected a few. And then I emailed those for my action. Now, what I'm also going to do here, let's start another brand new search. I'll just click on quick search. And now let's do a little bit more in this search itself. Uh, so. One, maybe I'm talking to Martha and she says, I need to make sure that the primary bedroom is on the main floor. So we're going to see if we look at our search template, that's not there. Um, you may also say to yourself, is there a way where I can just save that search where primary bedroom on main floor is already selected when I begin the search? So can I save a search with, with pre-made search criteria to use again and again? So we're going to save a favorite search. So let's look at our search template itself. When I start the search, it says residential at the top. Maybe you want to search for vacant land. Right underneath where it says residential, it says change my search template. And when I click on that, I see these are the different property types. Now, everybody has had to go through those growing pains because you changed uh, the labels of fields and things like that back in November when uh, Triangle MLS went for that RISO standard certification. That's the Real Estate Standards Organization. So it puts field labels and property types more in line with what they are across the whole country. But you do have help. If you're like, well, I want multifamily, but I don't see that in the search template there is this little guided help question mark right here. Just hover over that. Multifamily was previously what it was called, and now it is called residential income. So if I wanted to do that, so occasionally you're going to see these help bubbles pop up. Uh, those are really useful, especially since you've had to go through that process of RISO certification and all the fields have different names now. Those help bubbles are in there to help alleviate some of those growing pains. So when I click and change the search template, you'll notice on land, for example, the fields underneath change. 
because on land I'm not looking for a total number of full bathrooms or bedrooms. Uh, instead, I'm looking for the location, city limits, lot size, acres, those type of fields. So I always make sure that I am on the search template that I want. The search template that I use, I come back later in the day, it goes back to the previously used search template. So it just defaults you to wherever, what search template you used last time. Underneath that, I've got my statuses. By default, when I start the search, it's looking at active and coming soon. If you want to select another status, you just click to expand that row, see my options. I'll click on closed, for example, and I could set my close dates right underneath here. If you want to select multiple statuses, use your control key, command key for Mac users, and while you're holding that in, I'll hold my command key, my control key, click on the statuses you want to include. So now I've got active, coming soon, pending, close. Uh, so just hold your control key to make multiple selections for those statuses. Now for this, I'm just going to stay with active and coming soon, but I'd like to point that out. And then I can put in my price, my property subtype, like I said, if I'm often doing a search and I say, well, I want to save that favorite search where it's always starting with just single families, primary bedroom, main floor, city of Rock. That's where I want my search to start. I'm going to create and save a favorite search for that. So let's just set that up. Property subtype, I want it to be single family. I'll scroll down here, coming down. I said, we're going to do Raleigh and then I also wanted to make sure whenever I start this search, it's going to have primary bedroom on the main floor. And I don't see my primary bedroom on my search template. So right underneath that, add a field to the search. I'll click on that. Over on the right, I get all the searchable fields you can scroll through. I'm just going to type in that search bar at the top of that pop-up. And I'm going to say primary, Primary bedroom, room types, primary bedroom. That's just gonna be like, does it have a primary bedroom? Primary bedroom level. That's the one I'll click and you'll see it get added to my search right over here. And I say most, 90% of my searches, I'm looking for primary bedroom main level. So now I've got this selected. Primary bedroom, main level, city of Raleigh, single family, active coming soon. So I want to save this search as a favorite. So then I can just one click access, start my search from here, and then put in whatever else I, am, I need while working with a particular content. So to save this search as a favorite, so I can use it again and again and again, and I don't have to put in this basic information. Question here? When you select, in that example right there, if you were to select So the question is, uh, main, or main or first? So if I do main or first, it is looking right now on either of those. Um, this one doesn't have individual Boolean operators because this is the field type. If I make multiple selections, it'll be either on, on this. Um, so I've got this set, I'll, I'll keep both of those in. And I'm going to save the search as a favorite. I could always look at the results, but I don't really need to because I just want this default here. So I'm going to go to my actions at the top. I want to save the search as a favorite. So I'll click save is right in the center of my actions. And then the first option is saving the search. So I'll click to save the search and I'm going to save this as a favorite. I see a question right here. So I'm going to come back to that question and we'll talk about excluding fields from the search because what I'll do is I'll make a specific search for Martha and then we'll exclude some things from that. So just to save this question right over here. Um, are you going to touch on how you can actually change the default in the first place you come to? Because you're, you're talking about saving an additional as a favorite. 
but what if I want to change just the, the principle of the, the, first, the first search that appears? So that's what I'm showing you how to do right now. You will never change just by going to quick search, the first search that pops up with pre-populated criteria. I am showing you right now, I'm gonna show you how to get to one click access to start this search template that we're creating right now. Okay, so it can't be changed. You Correct. Your favorite, you gotta go one step. Right, a search template itself is always going to be blank. If I click on quick search, it's gonna start me on a blank template. Now. I am going to, before I save this search, right at the top right, click this little box, mark that as a favorite. And then I'm saving this, it's a new search, and I'm just gonna call this Raleigh and primary bedroom name. So I know anytime I start this search, that's where we're beginning. You can put in a search description. Uh, there's really no reason, and I'm a slow typer. And then I'm not saving it for a contact yet or anything. I'm not making it send updates. I'll just click on save. So I can find this search. I can go to my menu, and I can go to my saved searches, and I can find it here in my saved searches. I'll see a section here for my favorite searches. But what I wanna do is I wanna have kind of one click access so when I start a search, we're just there. And I'm going to go back out to my dashboard and I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna find that saved searches gadget. I'm gonna just bring that up to the top so we can see it. And with this, it's looking at all of my searches. I might have hundreds, thousands of searches, but I can click those three dots on the saved search gadget Go to settings, and here I'll set that to show only my favorite searches. So now I'll click on save on the gadget so it saves. So now whenever I come into Flex MLS and I say, all right, I just want to start my Raleigh search, everything selected, main bedroom, or bedroom on the main floor, first floor, click on the search itself, and now I'm going to land. It's going to start me on search results, but I just click over here, edit search. If I want to now continue putting in Martha's search criteria, I can build that for Martha <coughs> from here. Got a question right up front? Could you leave that field blank if you just wanted to have that section show up in a search? Right here? So, question is, and then we're getting into, into, into the weeds now. Um, <laughs> the question is, and I'll end with this because I do think this is worthwhile, is, I just want the primary bedroom level there, but I don't want it pre-selected. And I don't necessarily need the city pre-selected, um, but there are some fields that I would like on my search template that would just be available for me to use. They don't need to be pre-selected, but I just want to be able to use them so I don't have to click add a field every time. So what that looks like, and if this gets into something I, I Love showing this in customization classes. If this is your first time seeing Flex MLS, your eyes are gonna to start to glaze over and you're gonna get confused, so I apologize. But I do want to answer this question. So the question is, right now, if I click on Quick Search, I start on my residential search, everything's blank, but I want primary bedroom, not anything pre-selected, I just want the field here so I can use it on my search or I want other fields here. Maybe I want to know if that senior community, maybe I do a lot of searching there, I want to put that. So it's always available, so I don't have to take the extra step and say, let's add primary bedroom, because now I have to type, I have to put the level, and then if I also often search for, maybe I, I gave senior community, I'd be able to spell, you're really, doubting that master's degree in English about now. <laughs> so I've got that here. So I just want these here, so I don't have to take those extra clicks to get them here. I don't need them selected, but I just want them here and available to use. So this is actually what I like to do. I like to just have a search template. So it's there, it's available for me to use, but I don't have to use it or I don't have to have it pre-selected. So instead of saving a favorite search, I'm just going to save my own search template so it's available in this list. 
Uh, so what I'll do here, I've just added those on this template, and I'm going to go, I'm gonna start this, I said the word save, I need to save the template. I'm gonna go back to this action of save. I'm not saving the search, it's right underneath that, save the quick search template. So I click on this, save the quick search template, and I'm going to give it a name, I'll call this, put a zero in front so it's at the top of my list, and I'll call this residential custom, so I know what I'm doing. When I come here next week, uh, I'm like, what is that search template about? <laughs> All right, I made it for class. I know that now, and I'll click on save, and tells me my quick search template has been successfully saved. I'll see it in this list. When I click it from the list, it won't do this for me because I'm not logged in directly to the system so it doesn't save my preferences. I'm gonna see if I can get it to, but I don't think it will. But the next time you click on quick search, because I used that template previously, it is going to be the one that's defaulted right here. So I don't even have to take an extra click. And now I can say, Let's just look for senior communities if that's the kind of search I'm creating. Or I could say, let's put in and select my primary bedroom level. So I just created that search template. It's available for me to use anytime I start a quick search. It's just going to be there. So I don't have to take the extra steps to click add that field. Yes? Can you this criteria? So now um, the question is. Josh, great. I don't like where that's at, at the bottom on that search template. Can I move it up higher? The answer is yes. Um, I'm gonna close with this before we take a break between sessions. And um, this again gets into a lot, again, people who are here the first time, bear with me. We'll go back to the basics at the start of next class. But I'm going to move both of these up in my search template. I won't do that from here. What I'll actually do in my menu, there is a section called preferences. So I'm just gonna scroll down. So anytime I'm making a modification to like the system defaults, it's probably going to be available in this section called preferences. And this one, preferences, quick search templates. This is where I'm gonna go because I created a quick search template I'll click on it, and now I see all the inherited templates that we have, but there's my custom template right at the top. So I'm just going to make sure that's selected. Usually this fits on a page, I'm zoomed in pretty far. And then I'll just click on edit for that template. And here, there's the name of the template, it's looking at residential, and the view, we'll talk about the view in a moment. I'll click on next, because this says, all right, here are all the available fields that I could put on the template. Here are the ones over on the right that are currently there. And so I see, I've got all of these here. There's my room type, senior community. And you can manually click on something and move it up the list. So I'm gonna just put that under total bedrooms, primary bedroom level. Uh, and let's put our senior community, I'm going to put that, I'm just going to move that up the list as well, put that above beds and baths maybe, and I'm going to put it under postal code. There we go. So now when I look at the search, it'll say city, county, postal code, senior community, living area, total bathrooms, total bedrooms, primary bedroom level. So you can modify that from here. And if you do, just scroll down right here, work the page top down. Save is going to be at the bottom, make sure you save. And now I've got this template. Last thing I'll point out from here is that maybe you have got a, a real FlexMLS pro in your office who's like, I've been doing this for months. I've, gone through all of the, the training videos, I know how to do this. I set up my own custom search templates. Take advantage of that, tell them, you can go to those quick search templates, select one, 
and you can click give that to somebody. <laughs> so this allows you then to go in, select the office, select somebody in my office, and give that to them. And that means when I give that to them, so if I gave that to Amy, for example, when she goes to quick search, she'll pull that list out and she'll be able to use that template that I gave her. So you can have somebody give you that template. I always have other people do my work for me. That's how I, how I really thrive at the office. <laughs> so, what we're going to do next, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about working with prospects. So I'm gonna set up a search for Martha that'll send her updates. We'll talk about the client portal, what they can do in the portal. I'll also bring in the map, since we haven't talked about map searching yet. And an announcement before we break? Yes. All right. Um, Wi-Fi. Is anybody else a Wi-Fi password? It's public. Okay. Yeah. Wi-Fi is public. Yeah. 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 Wireless and the password is Realtors. All are okay. So Realtors. Thank all you. Are okay. You're All right, and let's come back here about 15 after, and we'll start the next
So the things we'll talk about, and again, if you're new, if you weren't here last session, my name is Josh Hernandez. I work for FDS, the creators of FlexMLS, one of the options for your front end of choice. And so that's what we're talking about today, using FlexMLS as a front end. I'll briefly review, and we covered this last time, why I think it's good to use FlexMLS, why it makes sense to use it as a front end of choice. Yes, Wendy. Sorry, I have another quick housekeeping announcement. So, lunch is arriving, and we'll be waiting for lunch in, what, about an hour? About an hour. Yeah. About an hour. So, we know this room is crammed, and there's no tables, and no place to push food. So, ballroom C is set up with rounds and chairs, and also, you can step outside and have some lunch. So, we're trying to accommodate as many people as much as possible, so thank you for bearing with us. But, um, you need the Wi-Fi password, again, it's realtors, all lowercase. And if you have an open seat, raise your hand so we can make sure everybody fills in and we're not standing at the door. Great, thank you all. All right, thank you. So we'll take a look, like I said, just a quick two-minute review, why you use FlexMLS, why it makes sense, according to me, because of course I work for FlexMLS. Subscriptions. Uh, those are the auto email updates. New listings go out to my clients. The portal, it can be used with a subscription or it can be used independently. So we'll take a look at that. But that's just a website that my clients or my contact can use to keep track of their listings, run searches, and then of course, reviewing all of that activity in contact management so I can see exactly what my prospects, my contacts are doing. So. Again, if you're just joining us, why use FlexMLS as a front end of choice? Um, number one, and we can cover this in our last Q&A session today, I know I've had a question on it already. It gives you immediate access to the listing manager. You don't have to leave the system to edit your listings. There are three front ends of choice, Paragon, FlexMLS, and Matrix, but there is only one back end. And for a variety of reasons, Triangle MLS decided to use FlexMLS as the back end of choice. So that means you can edit your listings from here, but it also means if you've been in using Paragon or Matrix, you've seen the delays in listing updates, where somebody makes a price change and you don't see it in that system for 15 minutes, maybe more sometimes. But because FlexMLS is the back end and the front end, there is no delay. Somebody adds a listing or updates a listing, you see it immediately inside FlexMLS. And then also, you'll have access to the FlexMLS Pro app, which we'll look at after lunch. Uh, the app, besides being a great app, if you know how to use the full website, search, work your contacts, same way it works in the app, and plus everything syncs back and forth. Uh, but you can also edit listings, change status, change price, add photos, and coming later in 2024, you'll get full ad edit access inside that app as well. So with that, let's talk about working with a client, one of my contacts, and creating a search for them. I have a question right here. Hey, just real quick, because I heard a rumor, I don't know if it's true, that mm -hmm. they're not, does, if you are on the flex and the front end and the back end, are you somehow able to see a larger geography than mm -hmm. what we would normally see? No, all MLSs have access to the same listing data. That all everything that's in the back end goes out to all three front ends of choice. Right, so they should have access to everything that you have access to in Flex MLS, Paragon, Matrix. They should all be able to see and search the same listing. So, 
Last class, we added a contact and just manually sent, emailed some listings to Martha. So this time we'll create a search for Martha. I'll also demonstrate using a map in my search since we didn't do that last time. And then I'll save the search and just turn it on so it sends her automatic updates. After that, I'll show you how to invite her to the portal. Uh, we'll look at contact activity and then we'll see where, where it goes from here. So let's start, I'm back in Flex MLS, and I am going to just start a quick search. We created a search template in our last class right at the end. So my template here, that residential custom template, already available for me to use, and that's the one where we said, let's add senior community to this, and let's add primary bedroom level. So when I begin that search, I can use those. I don't have to go to the bottom and click add a field. Now for Martha, let's just put in some really basic search criteria. I'm going to say, you can put in a minimum, you can put in a maximum, you can put in both. I'm just going to keep it pretty general for Martha's search right now because I want to get listings that I can use on the map. Uh, so maybe not the most realistic search in the world, but let's do, 400,000 plus, Martha tells me money is no object. I like working with Martha. Uh, I'm going to just narrow this down. You can add multiple cities, counties, whatever you're looking for, but I'll just do Raleigh today. And then, since we added our field for bedroom level, I'll just say let's have a minimum of four beds and primary bedroom. Let's make sure it's on main floor. I'm gonna come in here. Now, I have been told that some agents are not currently entering in the primary bedroom level when they're entering in listing data in the listing manager. So your search results are only as good as the data entered by the listing agent. I know I can trust everybody in this room. <laughs> However, you don't know, if somebody's not in this room, we don't know that they're as responsible as you. If we wanted to request more required fields, does that change to flex or to our So the question is, hey, I've got a great idea for fields that should be required. Can I request that? Who do I request it to? You would start by reaching out to Triangle MLS support for that. Triangle MLS would have to be the one that requests that change. Sometimes people ask me for a change and I'm like, if I could, I mean, I can, but I'm gonna get in trouble if I just go in because the MLS would be like, why did you change our stuff, Josh? We did it for a reason. Question right back here. Um, so what if it's not required in some interfaces, but it is in others, right? So like, I think- So there is only one interface for adding and editing listings. So there is not any way for a field to be required in one interface and not another. There's only one listing manager. That's one of the reasons why they have it. That takes up on the microphone. So is that, uh, why, is that why, so is it just waiting for like the ones that were in before whenever we didn't have the flex in my list, like some of those fields are now required? Correct. There may be newly required fields that weren't required previously. Okay. So the agents may not have edited the listing or have put that information in yet from those older listings. Uh, when they change it, when, they, when you go in and do like a price change or status change, your listing manager says, also, fill out this field. Question right here. Okay, so what's the difference between main and first? Because to me, that seems redundant and a way to also miss if you don't put both in. So, I think that is a good question. The question is, what's the difference between main floor and first floor? <laughs> And I do not have an answer. I didn't set up the fields or the options within the fields for you. Um, I don't know if Lynn has an immediate answer. I don't, but I know that it is explained somewhere. And I wonder if it's really Oh, I don't It may be in the listing manager. If there's help, um, and that, that may be in the listing manager where you've seen that explanation for that. I don't know off the top of my head um, why those two choices are in or what the exact difference is. Um, we, we can come back in our last class if we want to and look at that, the listing manager and see if that help is available. Now, I'm going to move on from here because people are going to ask me questions uh, nonstop. And what I want to do is talk a little bit about using the map in my search. 
because I came in, I put in some basic search criteria for Martha. I've got this map that is always present. And if I want to search on the map, I can. I can also just ignore it. I can just use my fields over here. But maybe Martha is telling me she wants to live in this specific location, but it's not a subdivision, it's not a neighborhood, I can't search on it. I'm going to draw it on the map. So on the map, because I want to make it easier for you to see, Whenever I'm on my search screen, this left-hand column has a little arrow that points to the left. I'm gonna just move that over. I can bring it back in a moment. But I'm just gonna move that so we have more room to work with. Same thing in my results row where I'm looking at listings. Click that little arrow that points up. So now I've got more space. You can see what I'm doing on the map. And I'm going to just point out a few of the tools on the map. So the first is this little hand. When I use that hand, it lets me move the map around. If you see me zoom in, zoom out, usually I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. Uh, so if you don't know what I'm doing and you see it zooming in and out, that's usually what's happening. There is this little information bubble. And that is called, if I hover over that, I don't think you can read that, it comes up pretty small. That is the nosy neighbor feature. Uh, so what that means, if I drill in, I'm gonna just zoom in on my screen here, where I start seeing these outlines, and I say, okay, this one is currently on market. What about this one? Has this been on previously? If I click on it, and I have the nosy neighbor feature selected, I'll click on right here, and I am going to see uh, if it has been on the market previously. I can also go out to CRS and just pull up the CRS information on that listing as well. So that's, that's the little information bubble. Nosy neighbor feature, I like the name of it. <laughs> Underneath that, there is a measuring tool. So it looks like that little right angle. I come in here, I can click on the map. And as I move that out, it tells me how long that segment is. I can just trace around here. And it tells me each of those segments. Double click, it stops drawing. So if somebody's asking how far is that, um, you can know, you can just measure on the map. And then other tools that I have for my map are actually drawing on the map itself. So there's a rectangle. If I click on the rectangle and click again, it just sets whatever search criteria I have. I'm gonna bring this back over here. I can jump back and forth. I can go to my map, I can change the search criteria, whatever I'm doing. You don't have to do one first, then the other. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit on my map. The circle, let me drag my map down. Uh, I'm gonna come here on this circle, and when I click on that circle, it starts drawing, it tells me what the radius is over on the far right of that circle. So I'm gonna do like 0.5 miles here. And, too much coffee this morning, there we go. <laughs> now, as I'm looking at these two shapes, it's looking at whatever I put in for my search criteria in either shape. But, right up at the top, um, it says shape, rectangle, circle, if I hover over that, because I can put as many shapes as I'd like here, I can keep, see what one highlights. So if I wanted to get rid of one, I click the X. It's looking within either shape. Click on within, and it would go to the intersection. So if Martha tells me, well, I want to live within a mile of where I work and a mile of where my husband works, I could draw two radiuses and just have that intersecting area in our search. I could also, I'm gonna come back out here, maybe Martha tells me, she's like, uh, I don't want to live within uh, a couple miles of the airport here. Um, so, where are we at? To the left? Tell me when I'm getting warm. Well, where's the airport? Left, left, there it is. All right. 
probably that one that's labeled airport. Um, so if, if Martha tells me, she says, I don't want to live within X miles of the airport, I've done it before, I can just come out here and say, well, let's draw this three mile radius around the airport. And when I draw that, I can say either within that circle, intersection, or not within. Uh, so I can do that uh, with a lot of my field. So just as an example, before I do my last shape on the nine, if I was searching and I said, well, I want to look in Wake County, but not the actual city, mailing address of Raleigh, I can say, <laughs> I can say Wake County, my city says of Raleigh, I click on of, and now not of. So now it's looking in Wake County, but I've just taken Raleigh results out of that search. <laughs> I know we have that question wow. I never know what's going to get big applause. <laughs> Although I did tell I did tell the team I worked with yesterday, I kind of feel like the Taylor Swift sent less trainers. <laughs> I know, right? So um, the last map shape, I'll draw, I'll draw a shape on the map for Martha. And I'm going to come in. And well, we'll just go back to looking within Raleigh here. But I'm going to draw on the map. I'm going to zoom in. I'm using that scroll wheel on my mouse. And to draw, I click. Bless you. I did it first this time. Lynn's seen me miss it every time this week. So right here, the last shape, freeform polygon, I select that. And when I click, it sets a point. And then you see it start drawing a line. So. I'm going to click again, and it just draws a line. It's a game of connect the dots, right? Click, click, click. I can draw right down the middle of the street or something like that. And as I'm drawing this line, eventually you're going to come out here, and this is going to happen to you first time. And you're going to be like, Flex MLS is broken. It will not stop drawing. Double click. And that sets the shape. And I can draw as many shapes as I would like. Now, if you do, I'm going to bring this back down here. If you do take the time to draw a shape, and maybe it's an area of new construction. It's not here that I can search on the field yet, but you know it's going to be popular. You want to use this shape again and again and again. You know you're going to use it in additional searches. Click on the shape, and it says it's a polygon. I'll click Edit. And you can give it a name, because Polygon is pretty boring. Whoops. Edit. And so I'll call this, I did Area 51 at the beginning of the week, so I think I'm to Area 55 now. And I can change, bless you again. Uh, so I can change the color, maybe I'll do a nice, let's do pink. Yeah, that's fine. But you'll see it says, Save to Map Overlay. So if I click to save it to my overlay, now, I can say I can start a new overlay. The overlay is just like a folder with all of your map shapes. I already created one, so I'm going to click Add to an existing folder. There's my custom locations. I've got Area 51 in there. We'll click on Save. So now, anytime I begin a search, I can use that shape, any property type. So I'm just going to show you that very quickly. I'm going to use that quick launch bar at the top of the screen, open up a brand new search just to show you. If I wanted to come in, and start a search and I say, I want to pull up Area 55. Right above status, I have an MLS number, address, or map overlay, this location search bar. And it'll show like your first 10 overlays. After that, you have to start typing in the name. So, but I'll just double click Area 55. And now I can see there's Area 55. So I can do that, any property type, any search I start, I can always do that. When I save this search for Martha and she goes to the client portal we'll set up for her, she'll see the saved search, she'll see the location that I've drawn for her, she'll see all of that inside that portal. So let's go back to Martha's search. And I'll take a look at the results. Maybe Martha's looking over my shoulder. Um, if Martha's looking over my shoulder, I'm on the detail page. And again, um, we're looking at this. This is 
all of the listing information, the listing agent, listing agent contact information. I don't want Martha to see that if she's looking over my shoulder. Whenever I'm on the detail page, click on report. There are different reports you can use, but the default is private version because it assumes you're logged in and looking. You can say, show me the public version. And it strips out all of those private fields. So now if Martha was looking over my shoulder, she will no longer see the agent only remarks. She will no longer see the listing member or their contact information. Um, you also have that ability when you go in and print the listing and it says what report. All of the reports that are available here have a public version, that's the client copy, and the private version, that's the agent copy. So I'm gonna go back to private. I don't let Martha look over my shoulder. And we're going to save the search for Martha now so it sends updates. Question right here. You're probably gonna uh, ask this or address this later, but did Martha change this in her portal? So the question is, I'm going to invite Martha to the portal. She can see the search. Can she change the search? And the answer is nuanced, but the short answer is yes, but not permanently. So she can go in and change the filter. She can change her price range, location, whatever it is. When she leaves that page and goes back, it'll be the search that I save. If you use FlexMLS IDX as an IDX solution for your website, uh, that will feed you leads, all that goodness, but it also allows your clients then when they're in the client portal on the, the portal, they can actually save those searches that they create. I'm not here to sell you an IDX solution for your website. I just wanted to point that out, that that is an available option if you want them to save searches and feed into FlexMLS. FlexMLS does have an IDX solution um, as well. But for this search, we'll start by just giving Martha the updates. So I'm going to go to my actions at the top of the screen. I will click, as you imagine, on save. I need to save the search. So I'll click on Save the search, and who is going to get this search? What's the search going to be called? This is a new search. I can name it whatever I want. I always put in my contact's name so I can see a search and know what, who it's for. Oh, spell Martha correctly. Martha, single family, custom, location, whatever it is. I can put in the description. Martha doesn't see the search description. I am just gonna leave it blank, it's not required. And then, am I saving this for a contact? If I was adding a new contact, you can add a contact on the fly. We already added Martha last class, so I'll say existing, Martha's in my contacts, I'm just gonna search, there's Martha Gorder. And as I'm looking at this, I say, okay, everything is all set. For Martha, how do I save this and turn on the updates? So if I work my page top down, I see save, that's just saving the search, but I want it to send updates. It is this option in the center on that bottom row, save and turn on or add the subscription. The subscription is going to say send updates, how frequently. So I'll click save and turn on that subscription, the updates for Martha. So now, the subscription name, that's not hard coded in, you can change that if you want. Martha will see the subscription. When she sees that, she'll see the subscription name. And I think subscription, it sounds very clinical. I took it off. Who receives this? If I want a copy, I get an agent copy. Uh, so mine has a big disclaimer at the top saying, click to view the agent version. Martha will only ever get the public version. Selected contacts, there's Martha. I could add additional contacts here as well if I would like. And if I do select multiple recipients, it's a blind carbon copy. Now, I'm going to just take that off. We'll send it only to Martha. If I want to know when Martha gets the update and clicks it, I can check this box. And finally, before I get to that question, enable preview mode. That's off by default. If you turn it on, it gives you this little blurb about what it does. This means that the updates don't go to Martha directly. I get the email that says, Martha search turned up new listings. 
I clicked to review the listings, and each listing would have a button next to it that says approve or reject. If I approve it, Martha gets it. If I reject it, Martha's never going to get that listing. Great feature, but it's a lot of extra work. So I wouldn't turn it on for everybody, just um, you know, somebody like Martha, she's fine on her own. She'll get the listing. She'll let me know if she asks questions. I'm gonna keep preview mode off. Now I had a question right here. Sure. So the question is, I've got a husband and a wife. I want this search and subscription to send both of them updates. We'll take a look at that. We'll go into Martha's record in a moment. I'll add somebody else to her record. I'll add Rocky. And we'll send him updates as well. Um, so off of the same search. I don't have to add them as separate members uh, or contacts. I can do it. I'll show you how to do that to send it to like a husband and wife. Got a question right here. So the question is, if this looks great, I want to start using that. How do I get my contacts and my searches over from Paragon into FlexMLS? And you can't bring your searches over directly from Paragon. You can't bring them over from Matrix. They all have their proprietary search that they use. You can export your contacts <coughs> into a CSV file. So in, Ma or in Paragon, I don't know the exact process because I don't know Paragon, but I do know that you can export your contacts. So you have your contact name, their email, all of that. It'll export as a CSV file. In FlexMLS, I can import my contacts in contact management under advanced. I'm going to see this import contacts, and that's going to say pick the file, match the columns of information you have in your spreadsheet, your CSV file, into FlexMLS, and I can bring those contacts over. You would need to then start recreating those searches for those prospects, those contacts, though. One more question here. Well, this question is more of a comment, but just one thing I have noticed, I was using Paragon and I have searches, and it automatically brought them over in the Flex. Now, they're not active in search changes, but that's one thing I've noticed uh, for people who had searches already. So those, I don't think that happens with any new searches. I think searches created before a certain time or contacts created before a certain time. I don't think when you turn it on, it brings over all of your current contacts though. Um, let's do one more question right here. Is it still going to put the heart? Is they like the house? So the question is, um, when my client, my prospect, gets this listing for me, can they mark it as a favorite? We're gonna to get to that. We'll see what they look like. It's a star, not a heart, but yes, the answer is yes. Now I'm going to move on from here to keep us moving forward. Okay. So why did you make the unchecked the enable premium? So premium mode is just extra work for me. I'm not gonna turn it on for most of my prospects. I'm gonna give you an extreme example of why I would turn that on. I'm talking to Martha. Martha says, Josh, I don't know what it is. I'm a little unhinged. When I see the color red anywhere in the kitchen, I just, I, I will stop talking to you for the rest of my life. I can't search for red in my search criteria. So if I turn on preview mode, that means I get the listing. Martha doesn't get it yet. I go through the photos. Look, is there any red in the kitchen? No, approve. If there is red, I reject that, Martha never gets it. Now that's an extreme example, but it, example, it, it, it allows me to curate that, but it's extra work on my end. If I've got however many prospects I'm working with and they're getting updates, I keep that off for most. Um, but it is available if you need it, or if you want it. Now, Martha is my recipient, and then I have, I think the most important thing here, the schedule, how often do they get the updates? The default here, it says weekly and every day of the week is checked. So it goes out, it's actually daily, not weekly. But that would be mean, that goes out at 6 a.m. is when Triangle MLS runs that prospecting run. So if there were three <coughs> listings yesterday that match the search, in the morning, 6 a.m., Martha gets an email bright and early, 
she can go in and look at that. Now Martha might be saying, that's, that's too much time. I need to know immediately when it comes on market. Just one click, ASAP, so as soon as the listing matches her search, she gets it immediately. Another one comes on 10 minutes later, matches her search, she gets that one immediately. So it just sends one listing at a time whenever it matches her search. Also, the listings that are sent, it's going to be status changes. So if there's a status change in my search, it'll let her know. Price changes, so if there's a price drop, it's going to let her know. Or a new listing matches the search, it's going to let her know. So it just automatically sends um, those to Martha. And then of course, you'll see the subject, the body. Every time the email is sent, it's going to be this subject, this, this body um, goes along with it. So I'm just going to load one of my email templates because I'm a slow typer. And I'll say, hi, Martha. Hi, Martha, here are my listings, or some listings. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have questions. I always encourage people on this email, let me just zoom out on my screen up here. On this email, keep it short, keep it to the point. Don't make a specific mention of time or date uh, because I don't know how long I'm going to be working with Martha and this goes out every time there's an update. So if I say, hi Martha, it was great seeing you at Rocky's birthday party last week. Here are some listings, let me know what you think. That's the same email with every listing update for the next who knows how long. I can always go in and change it, but let's save myself some work in the future and just keep it short to the point. This email, when Mark receives it, will also include a preview of the listing. So she sees the listing's primary photo, the price, there's a price drop, there's a little arrow that points down next to the price. Um, and she can tap to view the listing details. It includes my contact information as well. And so, all I did here really was set the recipient, Martha, set the schedule, and then just set up my email, and then I click on save. Now, I do get one pop-up on my screen right now that says, what do you want to do with the current listings? The subscription, I just turned it on for Martha, that goes from 11.58 a.m. forward. So if I want to send her all 16 current results, that's why this comes up, because I could manually email her the current listings that match. I'm going to invite Martha to use the portal, and she can just see the search live inside the portal, so I'm not even gonna bother sending her the current match right here. So I'm gonna come and look at what we did inside contact management. So in contact management here, I am going to see all of my contacts and just give us a little more room on the screen here. There we go. And I've got Martha, if I don't want to scroll down because I've got hundreds of contacts to search in that little search bar, there's Martha. Now you'll notice before I got to Martha, when I come to this screen though, I'm already seeing it automatically filters my active contacts to the top. So anybody who's been clicking on listings in the past seven days is filtered to the top. Now we'll talk more about that activity in a moment, but let's go ahead and look at Martha, bless you. I'll come out here, we'll go to Martha, and I added Martha really quick. I added her when we did our first example today when I manually emailed listings. So if I've got more information, like she has a spouse, I want Rocky to also receive listing updates, I click on edit contact on Martha's card here, and then I see her name, Martha Gorder, additional contacts. She's got a spouse, significant other. I don't know her exact relationship with Rocky, but I'm gonna add Rocky in as a recipient. So Rocky Gorder, just additional contact. But this is the email that I have for Martha. I can add additional email addresses and I can set this to whatever Rocky's email is. Natasha and Boris. Yes. <laughs> when I add the additional email, check that box that says notify. And that means Rocky's going to get the subscription updates for the search as well. 
Now I can also put in contact information. I didn't add a phone number for Martha yet. So I'm gonna put that in. And once I've made my updates here, I'll just click to save the changes. So I click save changes. Now I see contact details, Martha, got a little uh, bell next to that, and that just tells me she's getting updates. Rocky, same thing. Uh, I'm gonna come back to this in a moment. There's a status next to the email address that says pending. We're gonna come back to that. But let's look on the search and subscription that we just created for Martha. On the searches and subscription tab, I highlighted it, and that's where we're at now on her contact card. I see the search. This is the search we made. I can always go in, maybe Martha says, oh, I, I need to change price, I need to change location. I can always click on this search, click edit, resave it, so I can edit the search criteria. On the right side is the subscription. So maybe Martha says, I'm getting too many updates every, every 15 minutes, I get an email update from you. I can always modify that subscription, I just clicked on it, same page where we were at, and I can say, well, let's just go back to daily for Martha. And then I'm just gonna make sure I work the page top down, click on save. And from here, other questions about the subscription, how long does it send out? Uh, and the answer is, it goes as long as Martha keeps checking it. If she never checks it for 13 months, it goes inactive, it stops sending updates. So if Martha's just looking um, for an investment property, she's only kind of looking casually, as long as she keeps checking it, every time she clicks a subscription update, it extends 13 months. And it keeps extending, it won't expire as long as she keeps checking it once a year. Uh, so if I want to turn it off, I can click that little trash can, and that way I can turn off the updates. I can keep the search on her record, but now she's no longer receiving updates. It's not mailing out the updates. The other thing with the subscription, the very first time I turn on a subscription for a contact, they receive an email that says, hey, do you want to receive updates from, in this case, Josh Hernandez? And the reason it says that is because the system needs to know that Martha's a real person, not a name from a mailing list. It's not going to just be sending out name, email updates to a name from a mailing list that you bought. So Martha did get an email that said, confirm you want to receive updates from Josh. So let your prospect, let your contact know that that's coming. Um, and that's why the email address says pending. So let's take a look at what Martha received. I'm just gonna open up a brand new window. I told you I would break into her inbox. You cannot break into a client's inbox. I'm going, this is an email program I'm using. It's like Gmail or something like that. Um, so you don't need to worry about where I'm at. We just wanna look at Martha's inbox. And let me zoom in on my screen a little. So the invite, or not the invite, but when I turned on the subscription, this went out automatically. I didn't have to do anything other than give her an update. So it says, Josh Hernandez would like to email listings to you. She opens it up. Josh would like to email listings. Let her know that's coming. All she has to do is click, yes, please email me these listings. So I click on that and she gets a little thank you. It says, as soon as something matches your search, we'll send it to you. So back inside FlexMLS, I'm gonna reload contact management. I'm going to see on Martha's record that her email address now, oops, email address right here, now says that it's confirmed because she just said yes, it's okay to send me updates. Uh, Rocky doesn't exist, so he hasn't actually confirmed his email address yet. Um, if you've been using FlexMLS previously and said, you know what, I was not aware of this, Good information to know yesterday, Josh. <laughs> How many of my contacts are getting updates? Are there people out there that I've set up but they're not getting the updates because they didn't confirm? There is a report in FlexMLS called, it's under contacts, it's called the opt-in status. Did they opt in to getting that update? I'm just gonna pin it out on my favorite so you see it up here. That just gives me a summary. I've got five who have opted in, 
pending octet. Uh, I'm going to see Quebec still pending, Matt and Carolyn still pending. And I will see Martha says still pending, <coughs> but if I look at that, that's Rocky's email address because I called the contact Martha, but Rocky is pending. It tells me how many days that's been pending. If Rocky tells me, oh yeah, I got that and I put it in the trash, I didn't know what it was. You can also just resend that request. Say, I'm gonna resend it this time, just say yes, send me updates. You can click here and resend that to Rocky. If it's undeliverable, it tells you why, who, how long. Confirm, it tells me everybody who's getting the updates. And I see days until they become inactive. Uh, so I know if somebody is going to go inactive. Now, really, I shouldn't have to worry about that because it goes 13 months. If they're not checking it at least once every 13 months, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> even, if, even if Martha's just looking for that investment property, she should hopefully be checking those updates more than once every 13 months. Uh, opted out by law when they get an update, there's a little opt out, like I don't send any updates anymore. If they click that, they'll be here under opted out. And then inactive, anybody who has not checked those updates for 13 months. And Tara may say, oh yeah, no, I, I, I do want those updates. You can always resend the request from here and opt them back in again to get those updates if they've gone inactive. Now, from here, that's the subscription update. So the subscription just based on the search and it sends listing updates, what that looks like from your client's point of view. I am going to go to Megan's inbox and I set Megan up with a really general subscription. So you'll see she keeps getting updates like every couple of minutes here. But I just wanna show you what's that listing look like when Megan gets it. So I'm gonna come in here, question right here. So they have to manually opt in. You would resend that request. I can't say, I'm gonna send you listings no matter what. <laughs> uh, because what happens then is they report that uh, and then other emails from other agents start getting blacklisted because FlexMLS's email domain would be. So I can personally say, no matter what, I'm sending you emails, I can send them the request so they can opt in again, but I can't just decide that, no, I don't believe you're opt out, I'm gonna keep you in. Um, <laughs> Legally, legally, um, that's a gray area, so they just err on the side of caution here. Yes? The time of day that So the question is, can we change the time of day? Then? The daily email goes out at 6 a.m. That is set uh, by Triangle MLS, so you can't personally change that 6 a.m. daily email time. Now, I just want to come back here. This is... Megan's inbox. This is her subscription update. Here are some listings to consider. The lane email I sent. Martha, or Megan, excuse me, sees the preview of that. She can say, oh, I want to know more. Taps to view the listing. And it opens up here. It's going to show her the listing details. I don't know why it's zoomed out so far. So she's got all of that listing information. It's the public version. Uh, if there are documents on the listing here, she can get into those documents that we have. Uh, in addition to this, as Megan is looking at this, if she's looking at it on her mobile device, that automatically just resizes um, to fit the mobile screen. If Megan looks at this and says, oh, that's pretty cool. What about the one that you sent me a couple hours ago? She doesn't have to go back to her email to find those listing updates. If she taps on back right here, she is going to see the news feed. This has all the updates that you've sent her automatically, all in the news feed. So she can always go directly to the news feed to say, oh yeah, this is the one that um, I was thinking about earlier, or this one, this one. She sees everything in that news feed. And she can always go back in, look at the details of one of those listings. 
So that's the subscription. It's just the email. They look at it, they view the interactive listing. If they have questions, they can click contact agent, or they can, of course, just email me back. The portal is going to give my contact the ability to save the, save the listing, mark it as a favorite so they can track it. It is going to give them the ability to run their own searches, um, and they can see the actual search that I saved for them. So what that is going to look like, let me just come up here, let's talk about the portal. <coughs> Subscription, we went through what the contact receives, the opt-in request, what the update email looks like in the news feed. The portal. The portal will contain the news feed, so if they have updates, they can see the news feed in the portal. They can see the search you save, search for listings themselves, they can reject listings, take them out of their search results so they don't see them anymore, mark their favorites. What the portal looks like, so Megan is a portal user. She opened up this listing. Normally she'd already be signed into the portal. It doesn't sign her out, but I opened up a new window. So if Megan looks at this and says, I wanna save this, the portal requires that they be logged in to the portal site. So I'm just gonna log in as Megan really quickly and show you the extra functionality inside the portal. Everything looks the same as far as the listing data. They don't have to have it look differently when you send it manually or a subscription or in the portal. All the listing data looks the same. Uh, however, in the portal, I'm gonna just click on back right here. Actually, let me come back. I'm using, there we go. I'm using an incognito window so I didn't have cross cookie contamination. She has the news feed now that she's in the portal. She has access to saved listings and saved searches. So this is the search that I saved for Megan previously. When Martha logs into her portal, we'll invite her in a moment, she'll see that search that I created for Martha. Um, so Megan can come in here. We had a question earlier, if somebody's looking at my search that I saved, can they change it? And they can tap on filter on the search and it's just a temporary change. Right now, current price, I had a really general search for Megan, so I just did $10,000 here. Maybe Megan wants to see, I just want those million dollar homes in my search results. So, I know, I, I work with great prospects. So now, as she's looking at search results, even though this is just a temporary filter that she's using, if she sees something that she likes, she can always, put that star on it and mark it as a favorite to keep track of it. So, or if she sees something that she doesn't like, she can always put that little reject next to it. Next time when she comes to her news feed or the search, that listing won't show at all. Um, she can always get back to it. Under save, I see everything, or Megan rather, sees everything that she's marked as save. Agent recommended, we'll talk about that in a moment. Hidden. Anything that she's rejected, she sees there. So she can always go back to those listings she's removed. Maybe there was a price change, maybe she wants to check. Here, while she's looking at listings in the search or in the news feed, it's always real time information. So you'll see she put two stars on this listing, but it's under contract, uh, it's pending. So if I told Megan, you should have put in that offer, and I told her that three days ago, and she's like, well, maybe I'm gonna think about things, and I'm like, it's gonna be gone. She'll see that in here. So she knows, even though the listing changes status, it's going to show the current status, also the current price and things like that. Finally, um, next to save, just to the left, Megan can come in here, and she can run her own searches, so if she wanted to come in and just put in Maybe she's looking in Wake County, status of active. So she's just going to look at residential property types, but she can run her own searches. Again, she can't save this search asterisk unless you use Flex MLS IDX as your website IDX provider. But whatever she does in here, even though it's a temporary search that she's not saving, when she looks at those search results, she can always come in and mark them as a favorite. So even though it's not in the search I created, she can mark that as a favorite. Or she can mark it as a favorite when she's on the listing details, goes into the details. Uh, maybe she wants to zoom in on the map. 
So a lot that they can do inside that portal. Yes. So we're going to get to that right now um, because I showed you how Megan logged in. But portal seems good. I want to start here before I invite, we're going to invite Martha to the portal because I haven't invited Martha yet. I just turned on the updates for her. As I'm telling Martha, you'll be able to save listings, run your own search. Martha's typical response is going to be, oh, that's okay. I already created an account on Zillow five days ago. I'm kind of a market expert, Josh. Um, but there's a reason why they're working with you. There's a reason that they're talking to you already because people very quickly realize that they do need that professional expertise when they're looking to buy a property. So as I'm telling Martha, I'm gonna invite you to my portal why use mine over one of those third-party public sites? For Martha, I'll tell her, number one, real-time listing data directly from the MLS. Everybody here, I'm sure, has talked to somebody where they're like, oh, I found this listing on the internet, tell me more about it, and they've got some weird outdated feed that they've looked at, and it's going to be days, weeks, months, years out of date. It's no longer on the market. They will never have to worry about that if they're using your portal because they know it's directly from the MLS. If there's a price change, they see that immediately in the portal. New listings, same thing. Also in the portal, they have contact agent. It's in your portal. So that means when they reach out, you get that message immediately. That message comes to you in two ways. Um, it'll come to you by email. So whatever your primary email address is, you get that email message from Martha when she reaches out through the portal. In Flex MLS, there's also the Flex MLS messages um, where I'm going to see those new messages here pop up as well. So it comes in both places. And in order to invite somebody to use the portal, I'm gonna show you a real easy workflow in a moment, but we'll just show you since I created a subscription and now we're gonna invite Martha to the portal, I'm kind of breaking them apart separately, even though they work really good together. I'm going to go to contact management and I'm going to send an invitation because Martha can't get into the portal unless I invite her. So I am going to go to Martha's record here. There, when I open the record, I'll see next to searches and subscriptions, the portal tab. So I'll click that. And now if the portal says off, you can just tap to turn it on. But what I need to do from here is click invite to portal. So when I tap on invite to portal, now the portal only has one username as the login. So it says, do you want to send the username to Martha or Rocky? Because I have two email addresses. So I would say, Martha, I'm going to send it to you. Share your login info with Rocky so he can log into the portal too. So I'm going to send it to Martha's email address. You have this message here for you already typed in. You can modify it, but it just tells Martha in this invitation, here's what the portal is. Click to watch this video. And then it also tells Martha, hey, after you log in, create a login for the portal, download the app for your iOS or iPhone or Android phone. You can download the Flex MLS Home Buyer app, which is an app version of the portal. Uh, so people love apps, they can download the app. The app also gives Martha the ability, instead of getting email updates, she can just say, turn on push notifications for new listings. And then that will just, she'll get the pop up on her phone, the app opens up in the portal. And so I'm going to email this invitation to Martha. I'll click on send. And now Martha has been invited to use the portal. Question right back here. So, I, could you repeat the question? I couldn't quite hear it. So with the push coming into the Martha's phone, is only coming if the listing agent is also using Flex MLS? So, the question is, that push notification ability for Martha's portal, if she downloads the app, it doesn't matter what the other, the listing agent uses for their front end of choice. It's based off the back end. So if somebody goes in, even though they're a Paragon user, they make the update in the listing manager 
that's still gonna go out to your contact. If you're using FlexMLS and they've got the app, then they are going to get the update. It doesn't matter what the other agent uses, but it's only available, the app for your client is only available if you're using FlexMLS as a front end of choice. Question back here. So that means when it says reset account, right at the bottom instead of invite to portal, the reason it says reset account, a portal invitation has been sent previously. If you click reset account, it says, here's a link to reset your password because um, you will never know their password. That's just a send them a password reset link. So from here, I've invited Martha to the portal and I'm going to wrap up shortly because I know we have lunch ready, but all of this activity that Megan has been doing, all of this, now I've invited Martha to use the portal. Uh, I can see what they've been doing. Let's actually, Martha hasn't logged into the portal yet. Let's go to Megan. So if I want to drill down, see what are they doing inside the portal, on that portal tab, I see Megan's got 10 saved listings, five that I've recommended. One listing that she's marked is hidden. So if I want to say, well, what's Megan saved? You tap on that saved section. It shows me what's inside her portal. So I see she's got three stars, two stars. This one's been canceled, pending. Um, I see which ones has she hidden. I can just come over here. These are the ones that Megan has hidden when she was looking at listings. Uh, recommended. If I see a listing and I want to put it in somebody's portal, I'll show you how to do that from the app. Um, in our after lunch class. But I'm just gonna go back to contact management. I can also see when I'm looking at Megan's record here. Now she has a search, but she's got all these million dollar listings marked. The search that she's run, here's the search parameters, million dollars, county of wake, status of active. I can look at the results that she's seen from that as well. So I can also see what they're searching for. So I can always say, would you like me to create another search for you that's a million dollar homes or whatever it is? I can look through this, see if she's marked any of those as favorite. <coughs> and all of the contact activity, everything that we've done today, whether it was just manually emailing a listing from the search result, or whether I set them up with a subscription and they're clicking those automatic updates, or I invite them to the portal and they're looking in the portal and searching for listings there. All of that, all of those clicks, they aggregate here into contact activity because it's not really important for me to know where are they looking at that listing? I want to know what do they keep going back to? So if I click on contact activity, and let me just scroll down my page a little bit, viewed listings, <coughs> Megan has clicked on 24, and I see 623 Davis Street, she's clicked on this eight times. This one she's clicked on twice, twice, and then everything else she's actually just clicked on a single time. So as I come into Flex MLS and I come up, I see my active contacts in the past week. I drill in to Megan. As I'm planning my next steps, before I even reach out, I know what she keeps going back to here. Also, when she's looking at the interactive listing, there is the option to share the listing. Uh, so I can see any listing that she shared here. There's 623 Davis Street again, West Davis. And uh, the follow-up question that I most often get here is, can I see who she shared it with? Unfortunately, no. Um, this is not a lead generation tool for you, so I don't see who she shared that with. But to sum this up, we took a good look at like subscriptions separately, portals separately, they work well together or independently. If there's somebody like me and somebody tells me, Josh, you have to sign, I'm gonna send you a link, sign up for the portal. I'm not, I'm not putting my email address in and giving, I don't know why, I guard it like it's precious. My wife, on the other hand, as you, before you finish saying the word sign up, she's, <laughs> got her email out, ready to go, <laughs> count me in. So different people are different. So I always say, give them the option of both. I'm gonna send you updates. They just have to click once, send the updates, and then they get updates. There's nothing they have to sign into to do that. If 
You say, I'm gonna invite you to the portal, you get the updates, they'll open in the portal, you can mark them as favorites, run your own search, sign up for it. Um, and then they say, yeah, sign me up for that. I give that, everybody start off with both options, maybe they use both, maybe they say, I don't need that, because maybe they like my wife. She's in that portal every single hour, she's got the push notifications turned on for her portal app on her phone. Um, she's like, no, I've got it, I'll let you know when I have questions, um, and will she ever. So, um, I say this, what's that? <laughs> to reset the portal? So if, for example, Crystal tells me I lost my password, when she goes to the portal login page, there's the I forgot my password page, she can reset it herself. Or right here, I can click on reset account and that will just say, it'll send Crystal a link. And all that link does, it doesn't reset it for her. She has to say, oh, I asked Josh for this. It'll say, okay, here's your portal link, reset the password. And she gets that email that allows her to reset the password. Now, before I take any more questions, I'm going to show you what this actually looks like uh, more in real time. Because we've spent 45 plus minutes looking at this. But what this really looks like from a workflow I'm talking to somebody, I say, oh, you want, sounds like you want to live in Area 55. Um, and I put in my price range, whatever it is, bedrooms, baths. I create the search for them. Um, not in that neighborhood. <laughs> we'll go. Uh, I'm just going to put in beds and baths. Well, that's not do five minutes, let's do four. And maybe a minimum of two. So I create the search, and we'll say that we're working with Ben Anderson. So Ben's looking at this, maybe we're looking at photos, Ben's like, great. And I say, Ben, I'm gonna send you updates. Anything that matches this search, you'll get, you'll get updates from it. Ben says, okay, I'm, I say, I just need your email address. I'll also invite you to the portal, you'll get a separate email if you want to log in and keep track of things and run your own searches and ask me questions. Uh, you can do that from the portal. So I begin by just saving the search, click save search. And then I name this, whatever I want to, I'm going to call it, Ben, area 55, my invented area. And then I'm saving it to a contact. I just did the search for Ben. I, he's not in my contacts, I'll just add him on the fly. There's Ben Anderson and of course, he needs an email. We'll call it Ben at triangle at whatever his email address happens to be. And from here, do I want to invite him to the portal? Yes. Invite to the portal. Save and add subscription. And, oh, got to type in an actual email address. And save and add subscription. So Ben just received an invitation to use the portal. You can see this search that I just saved for him right now. And here's the subscription. I want it to go out to Ben. I don't need a copy, I'll just check contact activity and contact management. I'll have it sent ASAP. I'll take one of my email templates that I've done previously. I'll say, hi, Ben, take a look. And then I click save. Now, Ben just received an invite for the subscription to get updates. He's got the portal invitation. Everything's set up for me inside contact management. So I don't have to make this a big drawn out process to get in and turn on a subscription or invite to the portal. I can do that all if I'm saving the search for the client, um, just like I did right there, where it's really just a few minutes as I get the email address, invite to portal, and turn on that subscription. One question back here. <laughs> I couldn't quite hear the question. So, if they choose just to use the email, if they don't want to log into the portal, they're working with me. Uh, and I just want to say, see, what are they clicking on? That contact activity, like I said, it doesn't matter how they get it, if they're just using a subscription, 
it all comes in here. So if these are only subscription clicks, it still shows in contact activity, even if they're not in the portal. So I see what they're clicking on, how many times. This just aggregates everything together. Also, if I go to my menu, and I'm just gonna search the word email, under my sent emails, under my contacts, I can see if Ben is asking me a question like, hey, that, li that listing you sent me yesterday, I can always see the email, when it was sent, when it was open. These are manual emails. Where my mouse is hovering over at the right, subscription emails, I'll tap on that, and now I can filter. So if I wanted to say, we'll filter by crystal, it'll show me the past 90 days of emails that Crystal has received. So if she says, you know the email you sent me last Friday. I can pretend that I know what she's talking about, but I would come in here and look because I've got a lot of prospects. So I would go for that time and date stamp and then see what was sent. I can go and look at that listing if I would like. So you can always drill down that way. Now, we are at time for this session. Uh, we will come back. We'll start just a little after one, I think, and Wendy has another announcement. So we have 